Hey there everybody, it's Rad. Today I'm going to be drawing some leaves and I'll be drawing them in a couple different techniques. One of them being sketch, contour, and then shading. I've got a birch here. I have found in my nearby park a um, red oak and I've got a maple. And you can see they've all have a little bit of wear and tear and even some bites from some uh, critters in the woods. So I think I'm going to start with, uh, I think the maple actually. And I've got myself a black wing Palomino pencil. It's basically a regular pencil, but it is very dark when you want it to be. And the first question to ask yourself is where should you start? Well, if you were drawing this on your own, you would start wherever you'd like. But because I guess you go, you're following me today, uh, you'll be starting where I start. And I want to start at the vein. I want to start at this mid-rib vein here. All right. So I am going to do this first where I draw that and notice my line. It's perfectly imperfect, you know, just like nature is. And then I've got this stem and I'm going to draw it with double thickness here. Not so perfect. And this one, I'm going to start off thin and go a little wider as it comes down. And I made a little mark there so I know that's um, the base and this would be uh, the apex. So I'm now going to do these other veins that make the shape of a V. I'm gonna go ahead and make the veins a little bit thicker and I'll do the same over here. When I draw a maple, sometimes I like to draw this little section here or maybe just like, you know, put a little dot there. So here I go. Maybe I'll just do half of it and then I'll do the mirror image on the other half. And if I don't like it, I could redo it again. Now a sketch is light, it's loose, um, I don't erase. There's no erasing that's going to happen here. I could just take off this eraser. Because if I do it light and if I do pay attention to what I'm doing, I should be fine. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of a bump there, although I don't, it's not so defined but in this particular leaf anyway but I think it should be I'm going to put in some of the other as I call them streets um, you know this is sort of like the main road to me the highway and then I'm going to add these other streets or other Boulevards, I don't know um, what kind of analogy you want to make. So I'm going to add these other ones on here. And I kind of made that one very thick. And I'm going to add, make this one a little thicker. You know, the sketch, when you do a sketch first, you just do the sketch and then you fix and you refine and define as you go. All right, so that's what I have so far. Let's say I were to draw this leaf, right? This leaf, to draw a sketch, I try to do in the first five seconds, the main shape. And then I refine and define. Now, a contour drawing of that, and if I, I could go over it with a darker line to show the contour, but I'm just going to do it here so you could really see it. You know what? I should have done this because it does have these, this texture on the edge. So you've got that. And then the shading. Well, I'm going to fill it in, and I'm going to put in some parts dark and some parts light. In fact, I'm gonna do a gradation right here. So when I'm using a pencil, I literally look at my pencil before I even use it, and I try to find that, that one flatter edge, right? In fact, I don't really like to have a sharpened pencil when I'm doing shading. There it is. I do this thing where I make these loops. I don't know if you can see that. They're overlapping each other. It's not this, watch. 
it's not a zigzag because I want to fill in an area, right? I want to fill in this leaf smoothly. I don't know if you noticed, but I put a lot of pressure in the beginning right here. Now as I come down, I'm going to go softer and softer. Because when you do a shading drawing, the idea is to make something look realistic. I could fix over here, I could go back and fix this. And as I come down, I want to go light. Now this is something that I would practice. This is something that I would practice. <laughs> I would take a piece of paper and I would do a bunch of these because this is not something that might come easy to everyone. There are many words for shading here. Another word is value. And what I'm doing here is uh, called a gradation. It's also called a grayscale. I'm also not doing a tornado. <laughs> Try to keep it in the same width. So I'm gonna do this in, in sections. So there's that value. There's this one slightly lighter. Then I'm gonna go for the medium tone. I'll do five or six of these, let's see. Then softer, and then really soft. And then going off the page would be white. All right, here I go. I'm gonna do this trick where I leave the veins pale, or maybe the color of the page, and I'm gonna be doing the shading, or filling in the space around it. The more you look at something, the more you notice things about it. You know what, I'm gonna actually gonna put some of these other veins in here with darker lines. This is gonna be kind of fun. People tend to look at this afterwards and think, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and you'll see it's not that difficult. It's kind of fun. All right, so there you have it. There is my maple leaf. I think I'm gonna leave it just like that. I'm not gonna put any uh, drop shadow, but I will add, and I did add a little bit of uh, shading on that one side of the stem, just to give it some dimension. So, as you see, this might look complicated, but um, not so much, right? So, let's go ahead with another one. Let's do this birch. I'm gonna actually make it kind of life size. So I'm gonna start with a sketch like I did before. Just to get that main shape. And then I'm gonna refine and define. What a small stem and thin too. So with sketching, you just keep trying to find that shape. And I might want to point out something else to you. Sketching, some may think, is this. Uh, not really. It's called like, uh, it's more like a textured contour, right? Where you're timidly trying to find the shape. But what you should really do is just find the whole shape at once. And then you fix it, right? The first five seconds of, of a drawing are your way just to look at it and just try to put block in the main shapes. It might look messy, but you leave it. It's no erasing. 
I mean, I could erase like if I were going to do something where, uh, like a cartooning project where I would ink this with a pen afterwards, then I could erase my lines. Or you could use a blue pencil for cartooning. That's something they do where they use a, a non-photo blue colored pencil, which is a, a great kind of colored pencil that when you photocopy it, you don't see the, the blue lines, just the, the inked lines. All right, so next up, let me continue with this leaf. These shapes that I see, these pointed scalloped ridges, mostly on that part. And then from the apex down to the base, I'll be doing more of these. Now this is a contour line, right? It's a little darker because I'm now at this point more confident in, in my line and what I want to um, uh, do as a finished product. And let me go under here, fix that. There you go. Interesting, I felt more comfortable doing the outside than I did the middle. Now, I'm looking at these and I'm seeing they don't match up these lines from this side to this side. They make what's called a, a chevron pattern. Like this, like I just mentioned, they're staggered. They don't really necessarily meet at the same point like that one. So, keeping that in mind. Again, perfectly imperfect. I didn't count to see how many there are. Not worried about that. I mean, as long as I get the main idea in there, I am communicating that this is a birch. This is the shape it has. These are the direction the veins go in, right? That's one of the many functions of art is to, uh, to communicate. All right, there we have it. For this drawing, I am not going to make the, the veins light. It's a choice. But I will do the shading in a particular way that makes this look shiny. I don't know if you could tell, but this leaf has a little bit more, I don't know, to me anyway, shine than the other one. Maybe it's because it's curled up a little bit, and so it's catching light in a different way. That could be it. All right, so with that in mind, I'm gonna keep it in that one position because this is the way the light's hitting it, and I don't wanna change that. Some people like to start their drawings by starting at the very darkest value first. I often like to start with the lightest value and uh, build my way up. I'm trying to find that flat area. In this case, I just went ahead and made one by pressing hard on the paper. Then it gets lighter over here and then it gets darker over there. And I'm gonna go soft, do that circular motion with my shading. I see a little extra here, why not put it in? Add a few things that I actually do see in there, right? Which is more observation than it is using my imagination. And I will do some of that same thing here. Then I'm gonna go over those lines again, I think because I actually see them here, dark, in the area that is light. Let me build up over here. Another layer of darkness, sort of like when I did this, and I added another layer to fill in if I thought I needed to. And as you saw in the last drawing, I have not erased. You know, just take your time, focus, and you'll be fine. 
After all, you're drawing nature. It's perfectly imperfect, so if you do make a mistake, you're good. And the technique I've taught you here of basing it on reality, but, you know, not making it so exact, like in this trick of just filling in the blade of the leaf, not so much the veins, kind of worked out in our favor. All right, so there you go. So then I'm gonna move on to the red oak. Again, I'm gonna do it sort of life-size. And here, you know, I feel like I want to start with the center vein again, the midrib. So here we go. Already I'm noticing it's perfectly imperfect. And the stem, there you go. So this looks like it was been eaten up by an insect. I kind of want to sketch in what it would have looked before though. I like these negative spaces, you know, the spaces here. I really like the way they look. I'm gonna put these veins in here. I'm, I'm feeling it. And I'm gonna sketch that out. And I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in the rest of this. Now, you see, I'm gonna focus on the negative space. I did that fast. It looks kinda of like a bunch of scribbles. Well, that's the idea. Then you refine and define, as I said before. So here I go. I just want to give myself a base to start from, and if I want to change it, I can. Or in this case, the way I just did, uh, do it a little different than it actually is, that's okay. I have a feeling it'll still look like what it's supposed to look like, and that is a red oak. So let me fix and work on this section here make some of the lines darker when I feel more confident in my line. And I tend to also jump around from section to section. It kind of gives the leaf a more unifying feel. And it makes everything look more together. It's funny, this leaf almost looks like it's got these bites from an animal here too. But nope, that's just the shape of the leaf. These veins don't really match up. Not even this base kind of matches up, see? Interesting. So again, you do this and it's not so perfect, don't worry about it. It's nature, it'll be fine. If you forgot to put one of these little, you know, pointy pointy things, I'm not gonna worry. Are you gonna worry about it? Don't worry about it. I will remember to put in these little um, 
spots kind of like that look of the uh you know makes it look more realistic again when it's not so perfect and in fact let me take out this area here because it, it was this is where it was eaten and I will make some of these veins thicker and I will draw around them or shade around them. Here we go. Oops, forgot to do the one in the middle. There, connected it. I also want to use one of these papers to rest my hand so that I don't get so dirty with this pencil. So circular motion. We'll get it looking smooth when you want it to look smooth. For texture, I can scribble scrabble in here just to give it a little extra something. Pressing darker where you think you'd like to, and lighter elsewhere. Again, I'm not making it as, as uh, close to the reality as I as I as you think I would by looking at this. So take your time to fill in the leaf. Some parts dark, some parts light. And let's see what we get at the end. So there we go, three leaves. Let me put them in the order here as they are on the other side. Maple, birch, red oak. Now it's your turn. I have only two words for you. Get cracking. <laughs>